Welcome to the Art Studio Insights Podcast, where we demystify the creative process and exchange ideas with career-minded artists. We are your hosts, Adriana Amay, and... I'm Jackie Sanders, and we are so, so excited to launch this podcast. Um, on today's episode, we're just going to share a little bit about us, how we met, and how we got this podcast started. So. Adriana and I are both emerging artists and we have studios in downtown Raleigh, but you didn't obviously start here, Adriana, right? <laughs> no, no. So let's uh, let's take a little dive into the past uh, so you guys can get to know us a little bit better. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and start. Um, so I am originally from Puerto Rico, born and raised. And I went to school there. I went to business school, not art school. And uh, my family had a business uh, that had like different kinds of art supplies. They specialized in printmaking. Uh, so I did grow up uh, summers with my grandparents uh, helping out in the business. So that was uh, my first introduction into art that I can recall, right? <laughs> and I moved to North Carolina in 2007 which was a huge change yeah entered the corporate world which I'll go into in a little bit and from there on I I did have the lightning strike at some point of art has always been in my life since I was little I've always painted and I essentially had to make a big change in my life and uh yeah, I did eventually end up in a studio in downtown uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and we'll definitely have to do a deep dive at some other point. But that that's just to kind of give you a general idea of where I'm coming from. How about you, Jackie? Um, so I am not from Raleigh originally either. I am from the suburbs right outside of Baltimore in Maryland. Um, I didn't move to Raleigh until 2016. Um, before that, I went to college at Virginia Tech and then moved to Raleigh after that. So kind of just working my way down south. Um, <laughs> We're transplants. <laughs> yeah, I feel like everyone here is a transplant, though. So it's always like rare when you find someone that's from here. I You're know. Like, Wait, you actually are from from here? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a great area. It's so nice. But I mean, similar to you, I grew up with creative influences. So my parents own their own architecture firm and they were always like annoyingly supportive of my creativity. So um, they are super excited to come visit our studio and have loved meeting Adriana and all the other artists in the studios, the space that we are in. Um, but we weren't always studio neighbors. We actually met, what I think, that, what was the year, 2019? Yeah, we met in 2019. Yeah, so it was like right it was after yesterday. Like it was <laughs> Today. Rest is history. <laughs> so right after I graduated college, I moved down to Raleigh and I had a total burnout after college. I studied art, did all the art things. And after my senior exhibition, I was just completely burned out creatively. So I really focused in on my health and my fitness again, because I've always been an athlete. So when I met Adriana, I was just starting to like after three or four years after college, being like, okay, I want to bring the creative practice back into my life, my adult life. Um, how do I make that happen? So I found this gallery in downtown Raleigh called VAE and they did Saturday art critiques. And so I was like, all right, I guess I'm just going to go check this thing out. So I walked down there, didn't even bring a painting or anything. And <laughs> I don't think I did either. <laughs> I was just checking it out. Yep. You so say your first critique, you didn't even. It may it. have been my first or second one. I don't think I had anything. I was too afraid to show my work to anybody. Yeah. Especially to other serious professional artists, it's you know, so what might they say? I know. And it's so funny because we've had new artists that joined the group since we've joined. And I feel like no one brings stuff their first time, which I guess makes sense. Um, you just kind of like scoping it out because you're so yeah. right. It can be so intimidating. Um, but the second I went to the group, everyone was so nice and supportive. And it was almost like recreating that bubble of art school in the real world again. Um, and especially after you and I met, I remember the first critique we went to, like you brought one of your paintings. I thought it was amazing. And we ended up standing outside of the building 
for like two hours after the <laughs> People probably thought we were crazy because it was like 30 it was cold. Now. We're like, okay, well, just like two more minutes. And we started talking about <laughs> and that thing. And then we're like, it's been three hours. And I'm like, <laughs> I just remember leaving that critique and being like, I feel like she's probably going to be in my life for a while. And it was cry. really exciting. It was like, I made a new art friend. Oh yeah. my God. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, no. And also like when we met, um, I was in that time frame where I was like about to put in my notice at work. I yeah. wanted to transition into art full time. Like I had just had a very stressful career, you know, in corporate investments. I had been in the industry yeah. for more than 12 years and uh, I don't want to call it soul sucking, but I think that's the best description really yeah. like yeah I mean I loved my coworkers and everything else but there were just some parts about it I needed to make a change um I had been working out of my spare bedroom um and I was looking for a studio outside the home so it was one of those things where it was like I was definitely in, in that transition you were in transition mode too like you were trying to jump back I was trying to jump in deeper than I already was so right. I, I mean I mean the, the rest is history I mean there were so many things already like when yeah. we met it just sparked I'm like okay oh for being artists we're not necessarily your stereotypical introverts that some people think about we're both relatively outgoing like I mean I can be shy but I'm like once I get to know someone I'm like hello like have we known each other all this time right. so it was a lot of fun um we're both definitely pretty type a i mean um, we're creative but uh <laughs> spreadsheets and oh yeah. yeah and i think that first conversation like just set the tone for our whole relationship where it was like both of our minds you could tell we're going like a million miles a second we talked everything from like podcast to like even you mentioning like, I'm putting in my two weeks notice this week to leave my corporate job and be a full-time artist. I was just like, my mind was seriously blown. <laughs> like, wait, going, what? Right, even though going to art school, I knew there were full-time professional artists, but I'm just like, my entire reality is like exploding in the best possible way. <laughs> I didn't even think that was possible for me. And I remember the first time we met, you were like, no, you need to be a full-time artist, blah, blah, blah. And it yeah. was just like- We'll definitely have to make an episode about that at some point. But right. I mean, it took some legwork. This is not, people don't quit your jobs. This is not a overnight thing. Right. Yeah. It's just Disclaimer, that when we met, I was in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, like, we're also right. like and both I think interested. That, that was the, that was oh, the inspiring- sorry. Oh, you're fine. I think, sorry, our internet connection cut out. But I was going to say, I think that was the inspiring part about it because when we were talking, I knew you weren't just like some crazy person that's like, I'm quitting my job tomorrow and like pursuing my dreams, which is great if you want to choose to do that. Like we had, even in that conversation, talked about like business structure and reverse engineering your goals and like action items to take. And so you could tell we were both already like business type A minded and like having that station to back up our creative practice where it was like, this is someone who's like on my level and understands it. Yeah. And then, then we got started talking about like, have you listened to this podcast? Have you read this book? And at the yeah. same time, we're both like, oh my goodness, like I can't just sit around and do nothing. Like we, we you know, we have to set these things in motion. Like, how, how do we get from A to B? I don't know. We're going to make it somehow. Like, yeah, we're, we're just going to go for it. And on top of that, we both had a shared dream of where we wanted our studios to be at. So we're yeah. both like, art space is like our ultimate goal. So it was definitely one of those things where we're like, oh, we have all these plans. Now, as y'all may know, when we met, you know, end of towards the end of 2019, yeah, it was like nobody I'm knew COVID was around the corner. So right. it was good that we had met when we did. Oh yeah. Because once COVID hit, oh my goodness, it was so, so tough. It was so tough. And I'm sure in future episodes we can talk about that and the creative mindset blocks and the importance of having that accountability but I feel like that's where you and I like we were like 
friends and talks like in between critiques, but that's really when we were like, okay, the world is shutting down. We are having like Monday afternoon, like touch in calls. Like what are your action items this week? What do you, what goals do you want me to keep you accountable for? All these different things that like, if I didn't have that structure, I would have literally gone insane. And I kind of already did go insane with COVID, but that's another <laughs> discussion. But like, we both really wanted to go. Like it just puts so many things in perspective. Like this is what we want let's work together to make it happen. And it was yeah, just- it was so like, refreshing. we're on the same boat. Well, similar boats. <laughs> I had already quit my job. So mine was a little bit of a different boat. Um, <laughs> but we were on similar boats and having the news of COVID and everything shutting down, it was really weighing down on us. And a lot of you may know or not, but um, a lot of times when these kind of ex- and external stressors come into play that you can't do anything about your creativity can definitely suffer so with Jackie starting to try to get back into it and now this happens Mia had just quit my job and now this happens it was definitely a game changer to have that support system where we could talk about anything and look if there was a goal that was like I'm sorry I didn't get it done this week I just I didn't have the steam in me. I didn't have the bandwidth. It was fine. It was a judgment-free zone, but at the same time of like also brainstorming, how about this? Okay, this is the big goal. How do we reverse engineer it? It looks like a big, scary goal. Okay, what can you do today to work towards that goal and just kind of splitting it up and, you know, control what you can control. Um, If you break it down, I mean, make it a little bit more manageable. So that's essentially what we were doing for each other. Yeah. And then I I think the biggest thing, like having that shared vision of what we knew was possible is what kept us so on track and sane because (laughs) basically having that vision and we had already discussed before COVID of like having a studio that people could come and visit. Like you were saying, we were both working out of our like second bedrooms at that time. And so it was like having a place where the public could come, a studio outside of our house, especially at art space was like our big goal. I remember putting out like my five-year vision at the earliest 2020. And then news alert, (laughs) both of us got art studios in downtown at art space last summer, which was amazing. So now our creative process looks so different. Our relationship looks so different. And that initial two hour conversation that we have had on the street the day we met basically (laughs) happens like every day now, (laughs) at least four times a week. So like, (laughs) not two hours in the cold. Let's, let's we're, in the <laughs> we're in our own studios though. Um, and so now like I work from home. Um, I have a digital marketing job as my day job. So working nine to five. Um, but then I spend my nights in the studio, some mornings still trying to find that balance. Um, but spending that time in there outside of my day job and yeah. you're there like all the time. <laughs> I've been asked if I live in the studio and I'm like, there are no hot showers here. And you can look under the work table. There is not a sleeping bag under there. Not yet. No, there's no hot water here. Maybe that's why they shut it up. Um, I'm kidding. Um, I mean, (laughs) no, seriously though, I'm probably in the studio about six days a week. I mean, super to keep a balance, I do have a full day off. And then I do like two half days throughout the week, depending what I'm working on. So I still have, it's not a typical weekend, but the equivalent of it. Right. Um, and I'm probably in here like six to nine hours uh, per day, some days shorter, yeah. some days longer. Um, it just depends what I'm working on, what I have going on. Yeah. Really and we rated for the world. Yes. It's so nice. And we always joke that like, yes, I do have my day job and I absolutely love it. It's kind of industry related. So like a lot of what I learned in my creative practice is helpful with marketing and vice versa. Um, But we always joke that like when I come into the studio after my day job, it's like my studio night is starting and Adriana's day is ending. We do like a tap off. I'm like, Adriana, you need to go home. Time to go home. (laughs) Because if anything, we need to kind of keep ourselves accountable for like sustainable rest rather than Mm -hmm. both of us are just like people that run at our goals a million miles a minute which is great but having almost that accountability of like 
when was the last day you took a full rest day? <laughs> what time do you need me to kick you out of the studio tonight? Which is a great problem to have. And having someone that understands that is super helpful because like we basically just talk all the time and we're able to give each other feedback on like works in progress, like any business strategies that we're working on. Like I said, accountability for rest days. And then even just like tips and tricks and ideas of like materials or resources. Yeah. And um, encouragement. It's like, have you painted today? How many times have you reorganized? Your right. studio? How many times have you cleaned today? Um, or, yep. <laughs> and it happens. Or have you looked at your social media or whatever the case may be, but we basically help keep each other going, you know, which, which is right. amazing. It's just amazing. Yeah. I'm like, I feel so, so lucky. <laughs> It's the best. And honestly, I think that's why um, we feel like it's so special because we've both been in that creative process phase where it can be so isolating. Like whether you're working at home or even like if you have one or two friends, we don't get to like talk to them on a regular basis or maybe their styles is like extremely different for yours or their mindset is. So we just love connecting on all these topics. And that's basically why we started this podcast. Like we love connecting with artists, talking to other creatives, um, and just allowing to have that open dialogue of conversation because we can't fit as much as we would love to have like a thousand person event in our little 200 square foot studio, we can't do that. So we really just want to like open up the conversation to as many people as possible. Yeah. And we both come from this place of we've received so much generous advice from oh other artists that are farther along in their path than we are um yeah. so we just want to share it forward that's honestly like one of our unofficial mantras if you will yeah. um basically do the same for others you know we also want to interview guests and eventually we're going to interview each other as well and just be able to share forward you know all those obstacles that we've overcome over the years um, those things others have overcome in the years that they've shared with us and yeah. just share it with you as well. Yeah. Cause especially coming like out of art school, I realize like, especially in academia, there's so many different paths. And then you get out into the real world and you realize you're in control of your life. And there's so many different paths that you can take to be a successful art and mm -hmm. create an art business. And so it can get super overwhelming. You almost like want someone to tell you what to do. Like, okay, where do I start? And there's not a one size fits all answer for everyone, but our intent for this podcast is really like break down what we have done, what other people have done into like manageable sized, just like small conversations. So you can listen to one a day, just listen or binge listen to them all at once. If you're having a long <laughs> trip to just like demystify that creative process and what it actually takes to be a professional artist. Yeah, basically a peek behind the curtain without any yeah. fancy schmancy language. Just literally look, this is what we're going through and hoping it will help you on your journey as well. Um, or if you're curious about what the journey is like, that is fine too. Um, and that brought us to then creating this podcast. We went with Art Studio Insights after a gazillion billion hours of <laughs> meeting and brainstorming. And yeah, that was yeah. a lot. <laughs> But oh, yeah. essentially what we wanted to share with you guys and I hope that the title evokes some of it as well is that feeling that you're inside this community of artists and creatives. You know, we're bringing you behind the scenes of both our art business as well as the studio practice because for us it is a combination of the two and these are already conversations that we were having in our studios and when we were checking in with each other and we found that as we talked to other artists some of these same conversations they were coming up again and again so this was also a way of like wait a minute actually like this is a way we can share it with you too, not just, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, like, like Jackie was mentioning a few minutes ago. Right. So we really hope you guys enjoy these conversations. And if you want to get involved and um, connect with us in between episodes, you can go ahead and follow us on social media. Um, for both of us, Instagram is the main platform. So my handle is at Studio. 
and mine is a May art. It's A M E I G H art. It will be on the studio notes. And um, yeah, we've had we have a lot of fun topics uh, in store for you, and we can't wait to share it forward. And yeah, we'll hear you on the next uh, episode. Right. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.